Hi guys, we're back again um, for our second video tutorial. Uh, we're going to be picking right from where we stopped in the last video. Stop the, the drawing tools right here, which we discussed about the line, the polyline, circle, arc, and the rest of it all. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the remaining drawing tools just briefly. This one's down here. Then talk about the editing tools majorly in this video. That's the modification tools. This one we have here. Okay, so let's get started. Um, this drawing tool is known as the spline fit. As usual, you click on it to activate the command. Then you can play around with it. As indicated on the screen right here, you can see specify your first point. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and switch for my first point. Uh, somewhere around here. Then move. As you can see, all I have to do is just keep moving in a particular direction and continue clicking on my mouse. That way, I get my spline tool active. And when I'm done, I could press my enter or space bar. And that's it. Basically, that's how you use the spline tool. And you have another one, the spline CV, construction lines, ray, multiple points. Most of these tools here for drawing are basically when you want to come out creative because they, they are quite flexible and allow you to have multiple directions and you can move in different directions regardless of whatever it is you're doing. And as usual, as you place your cursor on any of them, it highlights it for you and tells you what it is action it performs. So as you can see, the 3D polyline, the helix, donut, this. So let's look at this reverse cloud. One of my favorite. So you click on this, shows that there's still about three other things under it, like I just did. Rectangular, polygonal, and freehand. In this case, let's look at the freehand. Since we're just talking about being flexible. So you click on the freehand, and now the tool is active. So now I'm going to zoom out a bit. Then first my first point somewhere around here. Then just move the mouse. That's all I have to do. And it creates a spiral cloudy shape for me. Looks beautiful, Shay. Okay, so that's it about the reverse cloud freehand. So feel free to play around with any of these tools and see what you can come up with it. And if you encounter any issues during the course of doing that, you could always let us know in the comment section. So now we'll talk about the modification tools, or some people call it the editing tools. So like every other tool here, once you like it, it does what it, it does. So this is move. Rotates, trim, erase, copy, mirror, fillet, explode, stretch, scale, rectangular array, and offset. Okay, fine. So we're going to be looking at each of these tools one after the other, and we're going to find out the usefulness of each and every one of them and how we can make use of them when carrying out the drawing on AutoCAD. So, to make use of the move tools, because they are editing tools, you probably have to draw something to make use of them. So let's use a circle this time. In our previous video, we showed you how to use a circle tool to make circles. I'm just going to draw a random circle now. Now, the move tool, I'm going to click on it. Now it's active. It says, select objects on the screen. So I'm going to select my circle as I highlighted here. Selected, turns blue. Then I'm going to right click on my mouse. Now it's active. It says I should pick a base point. All I'm going to do is just go around and pick the middle points. Then let's click and move to the specified destination. As easy as that. So that's all about the move tool. 
The next tool here is to rotate. Uh, okay. How about we draw a polygon this time? Let's say triangle. Uh, let's say. Okay. There we go. I have to zoom in because it was quite small. So you can get a good view of it. Here's our triangle. So we want to rotate this triangle. I'm going to click the rotate tool. It's active. Same method, select object. I'm going to select my object, right click, hover around, find my base point, left click, and look. I can rotate to whichever direction I want just by moving the mouse in different directions like I'm doing right now. So, I think this is fine. You can have it in this direction. Okay. So fine, that's our triangle that has been rotated. And that's how you use rotate so. So, right now, I want to show you guys how to use the trim tool. Still using this triangle, I'm going to draw a line across the triangle. Selected the line tool now, pick my first point, and pick the next point, then enter. Now, this is a line drawn across a triangle that has been rotated using the rotate tool. Now, I want to trim it. I want to trim this part off. As displayed on the screen, this part in the middle. So that way, I have just this part extended out and this part extended out. The trim tool is actually very useful in tight situations as it can help you manipulate the drawing and give you a clearer insight onto how you could actually trim some parts off and lift some parts that are relevant to your drawing. Regardless of whatever kind of drawing you're carrying out, probably an architectural drawing, a floor plan whatever the case might be. So, you click on the trim tool as usual, but this time, as soon as you click on the trim tool, you right click to make it active. Now I just did that. And now it says select object to trim, or shift select to extend. Right now we're dealing with trim. So now I said I want to trim this part off. Notice that as soon as I bring my mouse close to it, it changes color. Look at this. Telling me that that part is where it's going off. But I want to take this part out. So I'm just going to put it on it and left click and it's off. Voila. And that's how you use the trim tool. So as easy as that. So we'll move on to the erase tool right here. And the erase tool is as good as you deleting. Basically, you can delete anything. Just like selecting and deleting. Depending on whatever you want to use it for. So I'm just going to do it one line. All I did was just select the erase tool, come to what I want to delete, and left click on it. As soon as I left click, it will select the object. Then to make it active, I need to right click for it to go. Let's try that again on the second line. Erase tool left click then right click and it's off so that's how you use the erase tool okay uh the copy tool yes one very important tool you click on it it allows you to make various copies of a particular drawing or whatever it is you want to make a copy of in this is in this case i want to make a copy of this triangle so i just selected the copy tool then I say select object. I left click on it. Then now I right click, which makes it active. Now, just like your rotate tool, I pick the center point, left click, and move to wherever I want the copy that I want to make to be. Let's say somewhere here, I want one here, I want one here. That's the beauty of it. It allows you to make several copies with just a click. Like I'm just doing right now. So, so right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight triangles on the screen. 
gotten from just one triangle. That's what the copy tool could do for you. Okay. Okay, so now we want to use the next tool there, the mirror tool. So the mirror tool is like the name implies, it gives you a mirrored image of whatever drawing you're doing and allows you to see it from a different perspective. Let's try it out. Click on the mirror tool. What object do you want to mirror? Let's say this triangle right here. Right click tool. Click the center point. And let's mirror it to this way. Now it asks me if I want to erase the source object. That's if I want the original one to go, or if I want to stay. I think we should keep it. So let's just say no. Enter. Now we have this. So this is a typical example of the mirror tool. The mirror tool is quite useful when you're trying to duplicate objects on opposite sides or trying to create a different thing but on another side. So it could come in handy too. Now the next tool there is fillet. Okay. So the fillet tool is basically for making curves at points majorly. That's why you are using it for in AutoCAD. So for instance, we're gonna have a situation where we have two lines. Let's let's have a line here. This is line one. Okay, I need to turn on my auto mode like we did in the last video to have a straight line. So I have one line this way and the other this way. Okay. Now at this point here that I zoomed into I want to have a curve here. How do I do that? Okay, I use the fillet tool right here. So I click on fillet, I right click and select my radius. Mind you, you are probably supposed to be working with your units as at this point, like instructed in the previous video. So I would advise if you are not working with units, you are probably doing something wrong. So you feel that this to this. Let's pick up a radius of a uh, sorry. A radius of like uh let's say hundred just for starters. Select your first line and second. Now this is how big that radius is. I wish you cut it down a bit. Click the fillet tool again. Radius of a uh, that's a 20. Select the first line and the second line, and voila, I have what we want a radius. You see, it? that's the fillet right here. This highlighted one is the fillet. Basically, that's what the fillet tool does. Now, the explode tool. All right, very important tool. Now, notice how these triangles are joined together as one. But we want them to be individual entities. That is, we want to have single lines, which is supposed to give us about three lines. How do we do that? That's what the explode tool does. It explodes a particular joint drawing to give you individual entities. So, you click on the explode tool, highlight your drawing, like I just did. And press enter. Now notice they are now separated from each other because the explode tools, the explode tool has been used in separating them. So that way, but if you want to join them back, you could. All you need to do is select everything, and you just highlight everything together and type the shortcut J which is join, click on it, and strain back, as you can see. Explode it, highlight, and explode. See? Separate again. Okay, that's how easy to use. The explode tool and the join tool work hand in hand, so depending on whatever you're doing, whatever you want to come up with. So you still have to stretch to uh, the scale, rectangular array, the offset, 
Uh, let's talk about the offset for a, while, for a bit. Um, the offset is basically for making duplicate objects at a distance away from the original. It could be inward, it could be outward, it could be sideways, whichever way, at a particular distance. So now I'm going to select this this triangle and try to offset it by clicking this. Now it says I should specify my offs offset distance as written on the screen. So I could say 5. Now notice this. It gives me the option of taking it in and getting a smaller triangle inside or taking it out just by moving my mouse. So depending on what I want, I could say I want one outside. I could still click on the original and get another one inside. Still click on this and get another one inside, like this. And that's what the offset tool does, like I'm doing on the screen right now, making duplicates. It's fun, you should try it. And let us know how that goes in the comment section as well. So that's how you use the offset tool. Now most of the other tools here are really for advanced drawings but in consequent videos we're probably looking at them but for the level at which we're going right now because it's a beginner's tutorial video so you really might not need this for now but in subsequent videos we'll probably look at this okay so this is where we end our video for today and we would like to get feedback from you and we hope that you subscribe to our video. Thanks for watching. See you some other time.